Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Seven Rivers Health. I'm Rick TC, your host. Today we're gonna focus on your health. Why is it so important for you to get healthier, especially with the springtime around now. It's time once again to get outside, do some walking, running, jogging, biking, whatever it is you like to do. So we're gonna talk to a health promotions consultant about what there is, what you can do to get yourself healthier and why it's so important both mentally and physically to do so. Also, we're gonna talk to Judy Offenthe. She's a life coach at Franciscan Skimp Healthcare. A life coach, I said, not a person who runs around after you with a whistle, that's for sure. So we're gonna find out what exactly a life coach really is and how it can benefit you. Plus, speaking of benefits, what is yoga? And why can yoga really help you? We'll talk, about, talk to a yoga instructor about what exactly yoga is and what the health benefits are down the road. But first, let's talk to Ann Meyer. She's a health promotion consultant from Franciscan Skimp Healthcare, and she's gonna to talk to us about why it's so important to get healthy. We are here now with Ann Meyer, who is the health promotion specialist at Franciscan Skimp Healthcare here in La Crosse, and Ann, thanks for coming with us today. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about getting healthier and talk about, you know, spring is usually, is spring usually the obvious time for people to try and get healthier, per se? It's one of the obvious times. Outside of the ever popular New Year's resolution time, <laughs> um, spring is probably, a, we think of it as a renewal time, a time to think about summer activities, getting into our summer clothes, um, just a, a chance to change things. But you can get healthier any time of the year. That is certainly true. Good, then. What's, what's, what's the obvious things about, why, why is it so important to get physically active, per se? The list of benefits keeps growing all the time and even though we know so much about it study after study comes out and says all the physical benefits of activity you know the obvious ones that we hear the most about are the risk reduction the risk of getting a chronic disease such as heart disease diabetes uh, certain forms of cancer even alzheimer's they're all reduced when you're physically active and, and embrace that lifestyle mm -hmm. What about, you tell, we always talk about the physical side of things, but what about the mental side of things? Well, there's, there's a mental aspect to getting physically healthier and happier, right? I like to emphasize those benefits even more than the physical side effects because these mental benefits are the ones that reach us on a daily basis. They keep us feeling good every time we exercise. So increased um, mood, self-confidence, um, greater ability to do things, live your everyday life, it can handle things like dealing with anxiety or, or tension or um, depression. Mm -hmm. Exercise has an immediate impact on all of those things. And, and basically helps whenever you're stressed out to the point you can kind of deal with those things a little better than... It's, than a, if, it's a great stress reducer, mm -hmm. definitely. And people, again, if, you're, if you get a habit of being active, you look forward to that stress reduction every time you're active. Mm, that's a great point. How about... Um, you know, people always ask the question, and maybe myself included, is, is do I have to really like really have a really hard workout to get in the shape? I mean, does, you, does it really have to be that strenuous per se? It's a big misconception. We always have it in our minds, the, the groaning, panting, huffing, puffing, <laughs> uncomfortable form of exercise, and that's so misleading because experts will remind us that benefits will come with 150 minutes of moderate physical exertion per week. And by moderate, I just mean it feels fairly easy. If you and I were out for a walk right now, we should be able to talk while we're walking, and that would be moderate exercise. Really? So it doesn't have to be that uncomfortable. Wow, how about, how about just the, so walking, and so it doesn't have to be a full-fledged run or a jog no. person. People, again, they get sort of caught up in what's the best exercise what do I need to do to burn the most calories, get the most effective workout? It comes down to what you enjoy, what's going to keep you coming back for more, what you will stick with for the long term. That's what's most important. And, I, and so I don't have to overwork myself to the point of, of sweating profusely you or really anything don't. to that matter. Um, you know, you can break your exercise into smaller segments during the day if you really don't have a lot of time or the ambition or the ability right now to spend a lot of time exercising, you can do it in, in smaller segments, say 10 minutes at a time. Even if you're at work, correct? I mean, take those That's nice a great little time. walks. You know, and, and too many people just spend all their time behind their desk or just basically immobile for the whole day, and that's hard. You feel really tired when you leave work, partly from doing nothing all day. How about mothers as well, when they're home, you know, they're 
chasing your own children, that's kind of exercise also, isn't it? That all counts. <laughs> you know, all those little things, that's, it's not official exercise, but it adds up. So playing with your, with your children, interacting as much as you can, um, doing as many things around the house that keep you active. What's the biggest obstacle, obstacle people face when trying to move to a healthier lifestyle? Many people think it's the time factor. And part of that is actually time management. So you look at your schedule and you, you think you're really busy, but if you look at it closely, you find times to fit in 10 minutes or take a walk after work or just fit it in. It takes some planning though. Mm -hmm. So try and do it not only at work, but before, Whatever after. Whatever works for you. Just like you need to find the type of exercise that is most beneficial and most favorable for you, you need to find the time that works out for you. So when you make a plan for when you're being active, you decide what is reasonable. Do I have time for half an hour today or is it really going to be only 10 minutes that I get in during my lunch break? Mm -hmm. And you make a plan based on what's realistic for you. How do you figure out what's the best way for a workout? I mean, we talked about walking. I mean, some people like to lift weights, some people like to run, some people. How do you know what's right for you? It's something that you enjoy. And you have to take into account all of your individual preferences. Many people have sore joints, sore hips, knees, ankles, and walking is not a, a very good option for them, for long term anyway. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of ways you can be active without doing high impact activities. You can do water exercise, you can ride a stationary bike, or you can take shorter walks. Many people can't walk for 45 minutes, but a 10 minute walk certainly would be doable for them. A lot of people see the mall walkers around all the time and, and you, you kind of look at them and you go, what are you doing? But then you think, boy, just even just taking a walk when you go shopping, you're actually yeah. doing some exercise as Again, well. those little things, they all add up. And we always, in our profession, we talk about taking the stairs instead of the elevator, parking a little further from your entrance in the, in the building. Um, again, just those little things on a daily basis make a difference. You talked about planning and putting yourself and kind of scheduling things out to working things out, but you know, you can always put the plan together, but sticking to it's gotta be an issue too, isn't it? It is, but the point in making a plan and, and the, the importance of making a plan is that you can review it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. When I work with with people, I suggest that they make a plan for a week. Take a look at their schedule, their preferences, what else is going on in the week, and they make a, a plan, an idea. After that first week, they say, what worked out, what didn't work out? What do I want to change? What's worth keeping in? And you modify it. Don't just say, oh, it didn't work, I guess I won't be able to exercise. Just modify it and change a few things and make it work the next week. Because to make yourself physically fit, it's all about change because, I mean, there's one week you can walk maybe a mile, the next week maybe only a half mile, but then the next week yeah. it may be two miles. And we have to be flexible around here. In, in Wisconsin, in La Crosse, we maybe can't do the same things year-round mm -hmm. as we might like. So you need to have a lot of different ideas on what you can do to be active, whether it's being indoors or outdoors, having tapes, um, doing some Wii tournaments with the family just staying active in general. We need to have a lot of ideas and use those ideas to be flexible with your plan. Have those Wii games kind of helped in a sense? You know, they've come a long way. Um, I think in the years past, we kind of looked down our noses at them because they weren't very um, beneficial from a fitness standpoint. They've added a lot of programs. And for many people, it's a good launching pad to become more active because it's fun. It gets you engaged. You might be a little more active than normal and time passes and you've spent half an hour or 45 minutes being active that you wouldn't have been doing otherwise. And so. especially even some of the stuff indoors and outdoors. I mean, playing baseball with your mm -hmm. kids or, you know, riding bike. And, and, and not only when I mean, we're talking about springtime, but even the wintertime or rainy days or snowy days, mm -hmm. you can do stuff like the Wii. And, and right. you don't have to even have all the bicycles in your house no. or anything. You can't be a slave to one thing because then you are missing out. What do you do if it rains three days straight? You need to have some ideas. And that's why there's so many options available. Now, one of the things that I believe Franciscan Skimp Healthcare has at their facilities, they have some of these some classes that you can take, kind of take part in. Can you mm -hmm. little, talk a little about those classes? We actually offer a pretty wide variety of classes at Franciscan Skimp in our health club, and they're open to the public. And most of them are early mornings, midday, some after work, and it's ranging from some aerobic classes, cardio blast and Zumba. People may have heard of that. We have a few Pilates and uh, restorative yoga and more traditional yoga. Um, just a whole host of, of programs for most people from beginners to advanced exercisers. And the best thing to do is try these out. 
We have a free trial week every six or seven weeks or so. We have a, a week that's open to the public, no charge. See if you like it, and then you can sign up after that for a six or seven week trial period and um, continue with that. And if you're interested, the number for those uh, tryouts and those classes is 608-392-3344. Uh, Ann Meyer, Health Promotions, Franciscan Skimp Health here. Thanks very much for joining us. It's great to be here. We'll be back in a minute. We'll be talking about life coaches. What really is a life coach? That's just back in a minute.